Delphi injectors, a fuel pump, a fuel filter, and run into problems after. And this could either be it won't start, or perhaps the customer's coming back within a few thousand miles or kilometers with injector problems. Well, in this video, we're gonna show you what causes it and how to fix it. This normally happens when air gets into the system and doesn't lubricate the parts, or we get contamination in, or a bit of both. Let's have a look inside the injector now to see exactly what's going on. So whether it's an airlock or contamination, it's gonna affect two main parts in the injector. I'll show you inside to see which parts. So we're looking at nozzle, and we're looking at control valve, or the two components that are gonna be affected by either one of those. So the first part is the nozzle, and any dirt or contamination gets in can cause the nozzle to stick, and therefore when it opens, it then doesn't inject. Also, we find that when the fuel's not going through and it's not lubricating it, it then can't slide freely, and we end up with fuel injection problems. The other main problem we have is on the control valve. Now this one is an older injector with a separate control valve and assembly. On the newer injectors, they're combined. It's a CVA, a control valve assembly plate. Now if I look at this one, we can see that the control valve should spin freely. So if I get a pick here and I rotate it around, this is perfect. It's spinning freely. And if I pop that out, we can see here that that has to move completely freely, free of dirt, free of contamination, and definitely filled with fuel to lubricate it. You can see these small parts. When this opening closes, we're looking at only a 30 micron opening and closing distance. And if we consider a human hair is around 100 micron, it's a third of the human hair movement. So the tolerances are super tight, which is why as a tech, you've got to be super careful. It's worth noting that if you're inspecting the inlet filters, one is mesh and the other is edge. You can clearly see which one's the mesh filter. The mesh filter can be replaced as, as the edge filter unfortunately cannot. So we've seen the two problems, now how do we avoid it? Well the first one, contamination. We look at our injectors, when they're supplied, they're supplied with all the protection caps on, both for the inlet, the high pressure inlet, the back leak and the nozzle. The first one is a really simple thing. Do not remove this until the second that you're about to fit it to the engine. We see it so commonly where people remove it, put it down on the side, dirt and contamination get in, and then you're already fitting a contaminated injector. Now the second, air ingress, that one's a little bit more tricky. First thing I want us to look at is, on the pumps, we sometimes have a transfer pump. And why are we interested in this? Well, to get the air bled out of the system, one of the first things that's the easiest to do is to bleed the fuel system using the diagnostic tool, but only in a certain situation. If we come in to look at this pump, this particular one is a DFP3 or DFP4 is the same, and this one has a transfer pump. You can see them separately on the back here. And what we say is that if we have a transfer pump like this, we won't have an in-tank pump, and therefore we won't have a diagnostic routine to be able to run the in-tank pump and bleed some of the air out. So we get a transfer pump on DFP1, we'll always have one. DFP3 and 4, which is this pump, it either sometimes will, sometimes won't, depending on the vehicle it's fitted to. And then generally the later pumps, DFP6, DFP7, they won't have a transfer pump, so they will have a diagnostic routine. So now you've got contamination covered, it's important to work on the air locks. We do not want any air in the system during cranking. So, first things first, if you've got a transfer pump, you can skip this. If you don't have one, we need to run the in-tank pump with a diagnostic tool. So we can select the vehicle using the reg, the VIN from manual or history. Now we can either go directly into the system. Now depending on the car, you'll either go into the engine ECU here or you'll go into the fuel system here. This will completely be car dependent. Um, if one won't connect, then attempt to connect on the other one. So if we looked into here and tried to connect with a fuel pump control module, so we can see this not responding, so this car probably doesn't have one and it's done directly in the diesel ECU instead. Select, select the diesel engine ECU. Okay, we have communication. So we'll go into this couple of options there, and again, depends on where it gets put in. Sometimes it gets put in test, sometimes it gets put in activation. So let's look at test, it's not there. Into activations, there we have, we have the fuel pump relay. We can hit go and okay. <laughs> That runs the pump for a short time, starts bleeding the air through. It's quite normal to do that a couple of times. <laughs> Depending on the length of the pump activation, we generally recommend three times just to get as much air out as possible. So that works if we've got an electric in-tank pump, but what about if we don't? Well, hopefully we have a hand primer on the filter housing, but if we don't, 
we can grab a piece of fuel pipe and manual hand primer. We're then gonna put this in line up to the filter inlet, up to the fuel pump inlet, sorry. And we're gonna pump it, bring all the fuel up, and that means we're okay then up to the pump. We've now only got to deal with between the pump and the injector. So that's up to the pump. After the pump, we've actually got two different system designs when you have a Delphi fuel system fitted. The first one is as we have in this rig, which is with a HPV, this is the high pressure valve, and the HPS, high pressure sensor. This is the first system. The second system is where we don't have a HPV, so the vehicle, the engine ECU, cannot discharge the high pressure fuel via the high pressure valve. Instead, the valve is deleted, the rail is either blanked off or it's machine where it's, there's no hole in it at all, and instead we discharge via the injectors. Now, why are we telling you this? Because the bleeding procedure is a little bit different depending on which system you have, with HPV or without. So if you do have a system like this with HPV, the easiest way to clear the air out and bring fuel into the system is to use the Delphi HD3000 toolkit. What this is gonna do, it's gonna open up the IMV to allow maximum flow of fuel out of the pump. It's then gonna open up the HPV to allow the fuel to pass through, clear all the air, and bleed it as efficiently as possible. The HD3000 was designed originally for diagnostics, but it works really well for bleeding fuel systems with a HPV. So first we have the main control box, which we're gonna to connect to a battery first. We need a 12 volt power supply. Car battery is perfectly okay with that. Then we're gonna need the adapters, which are relevant for the rail we've got. Over to the adapter section. These are both using the same two adapters. So let's get them connected on, power the unit up, and I'll show you how to do it. So if this was on the car, we would disconnect the original car's harnesses from this, attach on adapters numbers one and two, onto the HPV, and onto the IMV on the pump. Now we grab the control box, and on the control box you'll see you have two standard connectors and two universal. We don't want the standard ones at the moment, we've got the universal connection to each one, they're color coded. Now on there, we have written on vehicle HPV, and IMV. So vehicle HPV onto the HPV, then over to the IMV. The other ends will be connected to the HPV block. We're not gonna need this for the task, but they need to be connected anyway. Now that's on. Lastly, we need to put it onto the vehicle battery. Positive, negative on the crocodile clips, and we'll connect it into the control box. Now everything's connected, press start. We do a quick electrical check, make sure all of the valves are connected, all is looking good. Now we need to come down to the setting vehicle and we're gonna set the HPV here at 0%. That's gonna apply no power to the HPV. It's gonna be in its fully open position. For all Delphi systems, we're gonna set the IMV at 0%. This means no power to it. It's gonna be fully open as well. So we're gonna push all the fuel through, dump it all out and bleed all the air. Click on start. We're gonna choose what engine temperature. We've got a cold engine at the moment. And the last one we're gonna select is the bottom one, which is the flow rate. This will give us a lot more time. And hit go. It's a Delphi fuel system. And now we've activated the IMV and HPV. So we're gonna crank the engine over now. We're gonna crank it and crank it and crank it. Let's get as much out as possible. During this cranking process, we'll crank it for 10 seconds, take a pause, don't do any longer than that because we'll start to overheat the starter motor. We'll do that at least twice. Once we've done that, we're gonna come down to the HPV, we're gonna press OK, and we're gonna to go to 5% and just go like that and crank again. This just allows us to build that little bit of pressure in the system before we disconnect. Once that's done, disconnect everything, the fuel's in the rail, and you can start the engine. As you saw that the rig had the HPV, but on this particular Opel Vauxhall engine, it doesn't. Now, we also ran the electric pump, but if it didn't, just a quick reminder again, we would take a manual pump. You can see here at the back, we have the inlet, um, inlet fuel line and return fuel line. So on the inlet, we'd put this in line with some pipe, pump it up, get the fuel up, um, and that's again, only if we didn't have the electric in the tank pump. So remember, if we are replacing the injectors, cleanliness first. Do not remove any of the caps until you're ready to slot it into the, um, the cylinder head. When it comes to bleeding, what we're gonna do is because this doesn't have a HPV, we're gonna connect everything on, including the return and the high pressure pipe. 
We are going to connect the electrical connector, but we're not going to tighten up the high pressure pipe. We can then crank, allow some of the fuel to bleed past the high pressure, uh, the threads on the high pressure inlet. Because of this, it's not going to build any pressure, so it's completely safe. Just to note, there's a reason we put the electrical connector on. If it's off, there is no water seal on it. So any leaking fuel here can leak down into the solenoid and short the injector, rendering it useless. So remember, electrical connectors on, crank the engine over, allow some of the fuel on each, four in, on each of the injectors to bleed out, tighten them up, torque them up correctly, and start the engine. Now always remember, when working with fuel, safety. So we're gonna do gloves and eye protection just to make sure. So remember at this point, we're fitting a new injector. We're gonna spin the high pressure pipes on. We're not gonna fully tighten them up. Place the blue roll under each, each of them, and then we're gonna crank the engine. So we're gonna now quickly tighten them up and then finally torque. And now that's all done. So as a quick summary, remember to be clean. Don't remove the caps until you fit in the injector into the cylinder head. Remember air bleeding, and we've got the different systems. So if you've got an in-tank pump, check for your diagnostic routines, either just running the pump, or if there's a high pressure bleed routine. If you haven't got it, and you don't have an in-tank pump, then use a manual pump to pull the fuel through and bleed the air out. And then finally, if you don't have a HPV and you can't use the HD3000, then keep the injector high pressure inlet pipes slightly loose, bleed the air through, lock them up, torque them up, and start the engine. Thanks for watching. For more videos, then why not follow us on social media or visit the Masters of Motion online hub. And for more expert-led courses, then why not check out the Delphi Academy. See you next time.